this piece of hair has been bothering me for so long and I keep shaving it to avoid looking like I have like an alfalfa hair and um, I'm going to keep having to deal with it if I keep doing that. So please try to ignore it. so I filmed this video before but I wanted to refilm it because I didn't want to look um, like I looked in my last video um, I looked horrible in my last video I apologize um, I felt like talking and I wasn't able to deal with my ring light at the moment so the, the video was grainy and I just looked like a mess anyway today I wanted to talk about ABDL and how it impacts people with incontinence. In this video I'm going to be referring to people that have incontinence as like the incontinence community. There's really not an incontinence community in the world. It's just easier to say it that way. And a disclaimer, this video is not kink shaming. If you are in ABDL, I'm not saying that you don't need it, that you should not be in ABDL. I'm, I'm not saying that your kink is wrong. I'm just wanting to point out how it affects people with incontinence because I'm pretty sure the majority, if not all, people in ABDL have not considered it. I want to kind of give a backstory on a video that I made. I made a video that's something like, I can't remember exactly what it's titled, but um, why I wear diapers at 21 or something like that. It's my most viewed video and to an extent I knew that when I was making it. I knew that it would probably be my most viewed video because I titled it in order to grab people's attention and I knew about ABDL and I'm gonna talk about how I knew about ABDL. Um, I naively didn't expect people to sexualize the video. Yes, I showed myself in a diaper and anything can be sexualized on the internet but I guess I wrongly had the assumption that people could be nice. I was talking about something that was very um, sensitive to me and I even teared up in the video unexpectedly and um, yeah so when I found out that it was on sex sites for ABDL I was really shocked. It was on a lot of tumblers. I had to go and ask them to take him down and I just was not really expecting it to get the amount of views that it did and that that kind of made me want to make this video uh, along with a few other um, incidences in my life but mainly the fact of how it was uh, taken I kind of got jumbled into ABDL without really wanting to be and I did not like that I am not ABDL um, and I, I, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with AD, ABDL. It does have some negative things about it in my opinion, which I will obviously go through in this video, but I'm not kink shaming. Please make sure you know I, you understand that I'm not kink shaming. If you like that, more to you. Um, so the people that do not know what ABDL is, what is ABDL? ABDL stands for Adult Baby Diaper Lover. It is a kink, a fetish, where people are turned on by either wearing diapers or people wearing diapers. In my opinion, I kind of group it into devotees. Um, it probably should not be grouped into it, but it's... Diapers are a medical tool, and if you have a fetish or a kink with medical tools, in my opinion, that is like a medical dis this um, medical disabled realm of fetishes that's me if you don't if you don't want to group it into that that's perfectly fine but for this video I um, I'm going to probably so again like I said people like wearing diapers people like looking at people that wearing diapers it can get a little bit more I don't know how else to really to, to describe it without using the word gross and again I don't want this to be seen as a kink shaming video um, I'm just going to describe it in whatever word you would just you would use to um, describe what it what how it can get is your prerogative. So people can get turned on the fact of using di a diaper so much that it leaks, whether it be um, scat or urine. Um, the, it can it can get into that realm. It's it, it's very close related to close to scat and water sports, which is urine, um, and so um, it's kind of like a mesh between um, that kink and a medical kink, in my opinion. 
I came to know about it because I was very involved in DDLG in my younger years. Um, I'm not very much involved with it now, uh, mainly for health reasons, but I did like DDLG, which is Daddy Dom Little Girl. And um, it's very different than age play. Um, I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but th it's important for the story. So I was involved in that, and I, um, those two worlds kind of cross. Um, and I think they cross because of age play and DDLG often get mixed up a lot. And um, I would say age play is more along the lines than, of ABDL than DDLG. But anyway, um, I was very young, I think I was 17, 18 years old, and um, I had been losing the ability to control my bladder for a while now. Um, I talked about it um, in other videos, but I used to wear spandex, and that's all I would wear. My, um, mainly due to um, sensory issues, and um, I wouldn't wear diapers because I was just not ready to accept that I needed them and so I would bring five pairs of pants to school or to work with me and I would change every time I had a small amount of accident I have to I feel like I need to go into detail of what type of incontinence I have if you're new to my channel I have urinary incontinence I don't lose full um, control over my bladder in, which I would describe as losing all the continents of your bladder and a bladder can hold around four cups at night and about a cup when you're awake um, So I don't lose anywhere near that amount and so not wearing a diaper was Technically doable. It was gross. I'm not going to say it wasn't but it's not like I was Peeing all over myself to the point where it was like extremely noticeable. It's like a tablespoon maybe two or three if at, at most um, but most of the time it's little bits throughout the day where my bladder is just slowly leaking kind of like If you need to fix your tap, that's my bladder. It just leaks um, and so mm, You're a biscuit haha <laughs> um, And so that's that's what my incontinence level is um, so I don't need a lot of protection I could probably get away with pads, but pads are um, I don't feel very secure in pads and I don't find them very comfortable. So that's why I actually wear full-blown diapers. When I first started needing to wear diapers, um, like I said, I did not want to wear them, but I slowly, as I got more into DDLG, I decided that, hey, this is getting really hard to deal with. Um, I'm tired of having to have so many pairs of pants with me. Um, it, it, and it just wasn't becoming um, doable anymore to avoid it and so um, I, have a ha I have a bad habit of using of needing something to validate something that's in my life it's something that I'm trying to work on but at this time in my life I was completely fine with that and so I was trying to use ABDL as a ways to validate the fact that I needed diapers. I was and it was more of a way like of me going like la 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 I don't have incontinence. What are you talking about? Kind of scenario where like this is just a kink and it's I'm gonna pretend it is and if you tell me it's not then fuck you kind of thing. It wasn't like an aggressive but it, it was aggressive towards myself because I hated myself. I, w I had done a lot of self-love at that point in my time but I still hated a big portion of my of me, and the fact that my body was, um, what's the word that I want? Can't think of the word. But going against me, betraying me—that's the word I want. Um, made it even harder to go along the journey of you love yourself. Your body might be not working as well as it should, but you still can love yourself. You can separate your medical conditions from who you are because I am not my incontinence. And I didn't realize that at the time. And um, and I was also really struggling with the fact that I'm 18, 19, 20. I'm really young. How are people going to love me? How are people going to find me attractive if I can't control something that you should learn to control when you're a child? And it was very painful. And so I used ABDL to cope with it. And... I, I really regret doing that because 
it was again me forcing myself to be something that I'm not. I do not find diapers attractive. I, I don't find them sexual. I don't I don't find I, I don't see any kink related to them whatsoever. They 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 on it they that concept of finding that sexual and attractive kind of grosses me out. And I have a hard time saying that and not feeling like I'm kink shaming, but I'm being honest. It's not something that I find attractive. And just because I find something not attractive or gross does not mean that it is necessarily gross. If you like it, fine. We're not talking about that. We're talking about how I viewed it and how I was trying to lie to myself about what I liked and what I did not like because that's what I was doing. I was harming myself in a sense by trying to force myself to like something, um, especially when the reason that I had incontinence was because of a painful medical condition. Trying to, to sexualize my incontinence, I had a hard time not, trying not to, to, to steer away from the fact that I was trying to sexualize a medical condition. I don't know if that makes sense, hold on. Hello, baby boy. Come on, baby. Sorry about that. So, basically what I'm saying, my interstitial cystitis cause, causes my um, incontinence. And if I'm trying to sexualize my need for diapers, or the diaper itself um, more so, then that bleeds into the other things. If you're sexualizing the reason if you're sexualizing me needing a diaper, then my opinion, I think the rest of that is technically being sexualized. And I had a very hard time dealing with that. So it was like having this constant war in my head and it was painful. I'm, I think I'm going, I'm going to get very heavy into explaining exactly what, how ABDL can get. ABDL sexualizes bladder holding. It sexualizes just a bunch of things. And holding my bladder is very painful. And I was trying to date people that liked this stuff. And so it was doing more harm to me because I was trying to be what they wanted. I was trying to trying to be their preferred sexual fantasy kink thing. And, and, and that hurt me. Holding my bladder, if you have interstitial societies, you know how god-awfully painful that is. And they were, and that turned them on. Now, did my pain itself turn them on? Probably not, because they didn't understand that it was painful because I didn't explain that to them. But again, it was his own war in my head. I was trying to pretend to be something that I am not. I, I, I don't find that attractive. This is something that's actually very painful, and I'm trying to avoid that pain, and in doing so, I caused myself more pain. Now, the fact that I did this, is this, DD, is this ABDL's fault? No, it's not. But, it made me realize that there are other people out there that are in, um, I'm getting the, the, the acronyms confused, DD, no, ABDL, there are people in ABDL that are in there because they have incontinence, and some of them actually might find it attractive, but uh, I, I would argue that a lot of them are in there because they feel like they, it's, they have to be, that they're, that they were like me, that they, they felt like if they were not in this they were not going to find someone that found them attractive if they were not in this they would be it's like this protection of getting made fun of because it, it would be labeled kink shaming if you make fun of a, um, D, abdl god damn it i need to write this down so i don't forget them and mix them up i don't know why but i keep doing it um <laughs> anyway my point is there was no one that I could go to, there was no community or anything that I could go to to help me process the fact that I was losing control of my body at such a freaking young age. No one in my life, and continues to be in my life, would have helped me deal with that. There were more people in my life that were shaming me for needing diapers, including my parents, and I hate saying that, but it was true, than not. And so my refuge was ABDL. There we go. Thank you, Bernie. Okay. My refuge was ABDL. And I can't, I don't, I was trying to hide from that so much. And I, but I decided that I need to make this video because that video that I made about coming out, about having incontinence and how you're beautiful too, you're not gross and all that. I don't think that was enough. 
I think this video needs to be made. There, because, god damn it, if this video was out there when I was dealing with this, that would have been so helpful and I'm sorry that I'm crying. I'm sorry, but it, it's important. I'm sorry. I really wanted to make this video without crying, but my last video was about me being myself and I'm a fucking crier and god damn it, I'm gonna cry if I need to. I'm basically trying to be the person that I needed when I was younger and that's what this channel is about. And ABDL itself, it is not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that it can be harmful though. Um, bondage is not necessarily harmful but it can it can can be it can become harmful just like any just anything can become harmful and i basically want there to be a place for people that are just realizing that they have incontinence and that they need to go through some kind of um how do i say this Something, another thing that is painful that in the medical world is having to realize that you need a wheelchair. I didn't have pain resulting in the fact that I needed a wheelchair. Um, and I have a video coming out, I believe, about why that is. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to bring it up. Um, needing a wheelchair is painful because it, it's, it's this unknown. It, it's something that can be made fun of. Um, in a, in a sense, when you're ambulatory, it can feel like you're giving up and a lot of people around you view it that way. And I didn't have those feelings about a wheelchair, um, but I had them about diapers. There are so many resources on the internet nowadays where people are there for you to walk you through the pain of needing a wheelchair and to some extent it's even praised and um i want to be i want to speak carefully with this it's it's almost seen as a way to get ranked higher in the chronic illness community there's a very there's a negative thing about the chronic illness community and it's the fact that i'm sicker than you i have more medical devices than you i have all this and i hate saying that but it's true so um, that does not mean that having these devices is negative, but there is a negativity in the in this community where my cat is tearing something up, where you are praised more for a custom wheelchair than um, sorry about that. What was it saying? There, there's just this 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 praising this this like. Um, you're you're more sick. You're you're more something when you have specific medical devices or aids, and although that can be very the 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 fact that there are people out there being like, if you need a wheelchair, fucking use it. It's a tool because it is a tool. You know, if you have the option of being in bed all day or using a goddamn wheelchair and getting to go to the store or maybe the zoo, then fucking use the goddamn wheelchair. You know, like that that's positive that is that is positive and there are people out there that are doing that in it and are, are being what people need um there's not that though for diapers and diapers is a much more shamed thing you know when you're teaching a child to use the potty you're you're like big girl you know big girls don't use diapers and so it has the stigma in itself of if you're an adult and you need diapers, um, you're either in the nursing home or it's a fetish. That, that's the only real known. Um, it, it's not something that is really talked about or um, uh, it, it's, you know, it's your beginning of your life and the end of your life. It, it, it's, it's not something that could possibly be um, present in somebody in the middle of their life because you know, who, who needs a diaper at that age? It, it's just so like, there, there's ignorance. It, it doesn't exist in a lot of people's minds. And hopefully I'm making sense. Um, 
there, it, there just does, was not any resources for me to learn from somebody else about how to love myself during this painful time in my life. And um, so I decided to be that and I made that video. And I didn't really, I didn't really explain myself very much I don't think and that's why I'm making this video because it wasn't, it's not enough for me to post pictures of myself in a diaper. You know, it, it's, it's, why are my cats making so much noise? I apologize. Sorry for all the noise. What was I saying? It, it's not enough for me to post a picture and be like, love yourself. You know, if you have incontinence, um, if you have incontinence, then, then you're, you're still beautiful. You're still worthy of love. You're still all of those things. I don't think it's enough for that. There are people doing it now that I, I see a little bit of it, but it, it's not, I think I've seen one other person do it, and I think it was once. There, there needs to be, well, actually, no, two, two people. There, there needs to be more. It, there, there needs to be more people outspoken about it. There, there needs to be talk and communication about how you post a picture online. You're automatic, and you're in a diaper. You're automatically put into this ABDL group or kink and fetish, and it's happened to me. There's been several people that have found my pictures online and automatically assumed. Even though in the description it's stated in, in the hashtags in, in the caption that this was um, has to do with incontinence, that I was still even so put in to ABDL. I am not ABDL. I am trying to be what I needed. And that the inability of people to separate incontinence from a fetish is toxic. That does not mean that ABD on itself is inherently toxic, but it has toxic parts about it. If I don't want my diaper to be sexualized, then I should have that right. You know, if you still find it sexy, then you can't really stop that, I don't think. But you can stop yourself from commenting something about how it's sexy, because when you do that, you are telling me that the most, that one of the most painful conditions that I have that causes my bladder to fucking bleed and it feels like there's acid in it, and even the slightest movement can make me cry. You're telling me that you find the fact that that medical condition causes me to be in a diaper sexy. That's what I say, that's how I see it. That's how I see it, and that is wrong. There are m thousands, probably millions of people on the internet that are ABDL that want you to tell them that they're sexy in their diaper. They're, they used to be all over Tumblr. They're probably not anymore because of the community guideline changes. But they're on Instagram still. They're out there. They're on YouTube. There are communities on YouTube where they make videos specifically for you to jack off to and do your thing to. I am here for a very specific group of people. People that feel like they need to hide. People that are embarrassed. And people that are ashamed. And are having a hard time loving themselves. I'm here for them. And I should have realized when I made that video that there was a possibility it was going to get sexualized, but I hadn't had the experience of that happening yet because I assumed, wrongfully, that people could be decent individuals. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm stopping. That's not what this video is. This actually is the opposite. This is, this is me saying even if people are being going to be assholes, I'm going to still do what I'm doing. And the fact that I stopped for a little bit makes me mad. It makes me mad that I allowed people to hinder what I wanted to do for other people. I, I guess that's really it. I, I think you should be more mindful of the next time. Because I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of ABDO people watching this. Um, Next time you find somebody online, make sure that they actually want that diaper to be sexualized because I'm hoping that more people are going to talk about it instead of hiding. There, there are so many people that are paralyzed that need diapers. There, um, I even know of a person that went through such great lengths to avoid a diaper and thankfully she did because she succeeded in it. But the reason she did it is because of all the feelings that I had. Um, and she did close to the same things as me as avoiding wearing a diaper and if she peed on herself she changed. 
but the reason she did that and felt the need to do that is because of how stigmatized divers are they're either sexual or they're stigmatized and there's 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 no in between and i'm here to make an in between because i think there should be there should be a resource for people to go to when they're first having to cope with the fact that their body is technically betraying them because that is a very painful thing to do there are so many different types of ways your body can betray you but the fact that you can't control your bodily functions is a very special kind of circumstance in my opinion um so yeah thank you for watching this video if you made it all the way to this end wow you're amazing um and yeah i hope you have a beautiful day don't forget that i love you thank you for staying alive and i'll see you next time